What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with the full review for you of Samsung's Galaxy Note 4. It's got a fresh design, it's got fresh hardware, it's got a brand new screen, but all of that add up to a phone that you want to carry in your pocket. Let's go ahead and find out. As I do with all my reviews, I want to give a disclaimer. I used this guy for eight days on at and service here in Southern California. If you want to see any more detail on what I'm going to talk about, hit the link down below to go to the written portion. Todd has his own review unit and uh, there's a lot more detail and pictures and galleries and all the things we're going to talk about. So let me give a little bit of a backstory before we jump into everything about the phone. I was in Berlin for the very first Samsung Note announcement when the very first one came out four years ago. And I remember thinking to myself, what the? expletive is Samsung thinking putting a phone that big in the mainstream previously you know Dell had the larger phones they were kind of fringe devices uh, it turns out though Samsung had more foresight than anybody gave them credit for or perhaps they stumbled backwards into what was a hit category they've had four generations to try and get this right and a little bit of spoiler alert I think they hit this one out of the park Let's go ahead and start with hardware. So if you've watched my reviews for the years, you know I've been really hard on Samsung in the past. I think they've had kind of uninspired designs that looked like they just designed one new device every three years and just made different size variations of it, whether they made a tablet or a phone. Not here and not anymore. So Samsung added beveled edges to the device that make it look, for lack of a better word, just sharp. They look really fantastic. They catch the light when you pick it up. They're cold in the morning. They give it a premium feel. I'm really surprised how much a little bit of metal makes that big a difference to a device. So picking up this versus an older Samsung device, as Todd described, was like comparing a shoddy secondhand suit to a freshly pressed new one. It's cleaner, refined, and something I think you could put trust in. You'll also find that Samsung didn't skip on components here as well. In fact, almost all of the hardware is among the best available on the market right now. And usually I don't say that for any device, usually it's a good screen, an older processor. Uh, Samsung really went uh, all the way to the wall with this one. Uh, so there's an 805 processor under the hood, complemented by three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of onboard storage that can be extended with the micro SD card slot, and a beastly 16 megapixel sensor with optical image stabilization, wide angle front facing camera, and just a ton more. The only thing this phone is really missing is wireless charging. Add that in here and Samsung would have hit a perfect score on the hardware front. I like the way the buttons feel as well, which is kind of a weird thing to say. There's a satisfying click on the easily reachable volume buttons. The home button has a really tactile feel to it. Uh, Samsung also included an IR blaster on the top of the device, right near the 3.5 millimeter headset jack. It's also ditched that kind of silly to use USB 3.0 port uh, on the bottom for a smaller and way more standard USB 2.0 jack. Samsung did admit that folks might miss the faster, be faster speeds offered by USB 3.0, but said they made the decision to return to USB 2.0 following customer feedback, and I applaud them for listening to consumers. Uh, I like this choice, Todd liked this choice, and it's way easier to find USB 2.0 chargers with quick charge, particularly as the new phones with that support are hitting the market. The rump of this phone is that aforementioned camera with OIS, optical image stabilization. I just call it OIS. Samsung also included a heart rate monitor and the sensor uh, can now measure your blood oxygen level, UV levels, your stress, uh, and more. Though We'll get to all that a little bit later. Uh, the new S Pen rests in the lower right hand corner of the phone and the home button once again doubles as a fingerprint reader. It is way more accurate here on the Note 4 uh, than we saw on the Galaxy S5 that was to me and to Todd, although uh, still not as accurate as touch ideas on the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. The back cover, while being redesigned and thank goodness no longer has fake stitching on it, uh, can be removed and it feels really good on this device. It's still a bit of flimsy plastic when you pull it off, um, but I would trade that any day for having a removable battery. And Samsung really makes that super easy to pop this thing off. You can access the SIM card and micro SD card slot. So yeah, it's a little bit flimsy when you pull it off. When it's on here, it sits almost flush to the back of the battery, so you don't feel any sort of give. It feels really premium. And I know this might be kind of nitpicking here, but I do wish the design also included IP67 rating for water and dust resistance. And I know, and Todd knows, that we can't sort of have it all, but the folks who appreciate that aspect of the Galaxy S5 might kind of be a bit let down turn the Note 4 and doesn't have such rating. So if you got a lot of kids, go to the beach, you know, you might want to be careful or just get a waterproof case or put it in a plastic bag. Of course, we can't really talk hard without talking about this display. Uh, for lack of a better word, it's insane. Uh, I've been happy with the display on the screens like the iPhone 6 Plus, which look really sharp and stunning uh, with 1080p resolution, but you can totally see a difference looking at the Note 4's Quad HD screen. Uh, it is gorgeous. 
AMOLED allows Samsung's blacks to look really truer than on any other smartphone I've seen. That makes ridiculous viewing for movies, photos, and the colors look like they're just popping off the screen here. So as soon as I got this thing out of the box, I wanted to look for quad HD footage to watch on this, but Samsung didn't include any, but fortunately the camera can record 4K footage uh, so you can check out anything you're recording. I went and downloaded a few open source samples and it looks really, really nice. Uh, even 1080p videos also look good. Text, of course, while reading a book or on a white screen looks really sharp and crisp. Of course, you're not gonna see any pixels unless you're Superman and have crazy fancy vision. And the screen also holds up outdoors which is even more surprising. I could see it in direct sunlight, which is not something I say very often. I know I've sort of been a broken record with Quad HD screens saying, I don't see a big difference from a good 1080p screen, and that's been the case until this guy. So if you can tell, I'm kind of overly complimentary here. Samsung really offers the whole package here. Gorgeous design, a beautiful screen, and the specs to match it. It's too bad though, the software isn't as clean cut. So the Note 4 runs Android 4.4.4 KitKat out of the box, which up until a couple days ago as this filming was the most recent version of Android. It's great, it's modern, but still it's got TouchWiz on it, which just isn't. It's been improved as we saw with the Galaxy S5, but it still feels overly colorful and crazy bloated. Think of it as like after your second Thanksgiving meal and all you want to do is lay on the couch. Uh, thankfully though, you can side skirt that issue entirely in the third party launcher, which is the first thing I usually do uh, to cover up TouchWiz. TouchWiz, to me and Todd, still feels kind of sluggish. Despite the Snapdragon 805 processor and three gigs of RAM, there are just still small jitters here and there that aren't buttery smooth. I think other skins like Sense 6 tend to be way more efficient. Uh, I'm not gonna harp on TouchWiz too much here though. I know some folks like it and there are many options available, which is one of the beauties of Android. If you don't like it, you can kind of make it go away. That is one of the nice things that Android offers. Samsung's outfitted the Galaxy Note 4 with S Health 3.5. We're still trying to figure out how useful all this is, all the health features. It's great at reminding me that I've been sitting at my desk for way too long, which I probably need to be reminded of. Uh, and I do that without moving, just kind of moving my fingers. Uh, but I we did use it for tracking the calories that we were eating. Still though for us, and I don't know why I need to check my blood oxygen levels, but it does work very well if you want to try it. Uh, and if you want to check your heart rate from your phone, you can do that here too. Uh, we get that Samsung's trying to create a health gadget and adding more functionality is always appreciated but it's just not going to be a make or break decision on the smartphone. They give it more as a value add than a reason to go out and get the phone, at least for me. Uh, thankfully though, the software that does that though is clean and nice to look at. Heart rate monitor is also accurate enough and reading on my Moto 360 and Galaxy Note 4 is the exact same, so it's pretty accurate. UV sensor can also be useful for folks who are worried about sun damage, uh, so that's sort of appreciated addition as well. But other options like stress monitor, I, I don't know, tell me I'm stressed, which I know that. So we've talked a lot about TouchWiz and my dislikes for it, but Samsung's S Note software is pretty awesome and the S Pen is better than ever. You can use the S Pen to select groups of items like pictures super easily. It's also even more accurate, allowing you to sketch drawings if you can draw uh, inside of the S Note application. Density of digital ink also on your canvas changes as you press harder on the screen with the S Note and it seems way, way more sensitive than before. Other kind of software stuff, multi-window has also been improved too. Not only can you run two apps side by side, we can also uh, pop some of them out like Hangouts and the browser and the camera and more. I'll run them in super small mini windows right on your home screen. It's actually more useful than we thought. There's a ton of more software tweaks I can talk about here, but those are some of the highlights that I ended up using the most. I could probably make like an 80 minute video just on sort of the software features uh, that Samsung's got on board here. And that is one of the nice things about TouchWiz. If you like those small features that Samsung adds, you're going to love this device. Find yourself sort of not using all of them though, you might want to look at putting a third party launcher on. So next let's talk about this camera with that camera hump right there. Uh, we said Samsung didn't skip on specs. That statement certainly holds true for the back camera here. It's a 60 megapixel camera, uh, which is absolutely ridiculously good. Uh, Samsung opted for optical image stabilization support, which we've seen in other flagship Android smartphones and of course in the iPhone 6 Plus. OAS allows you to take better shots and low light and also helps keep the phone as your video recording, just keep it a little more smooth. Um, it's not perfect for moving objects. Those are, those are still able to blur a little bit, uh, but should help you to take cleaner images if you're just sort of moving a little bit or you got shaky arms. Uh, we've got a video sample right down below if you want to take a look at that and see what it looks like. We shot it outside. Uh, but video quality came out really, really nice as well. On the picture front, the shots we took on the Note 4 also came out really nice. Unsurprisingly, they look very good, especially in low light. If you want to see examples of all those, so hit the link down below and go to Todd's article. You can see a whole gallery of all damn pictures. One of the things I'm always worried about with a Quad HD phone is battery life. 
Um, one of the main reasons we like to test phones for just a few days here is that often there seems to be improvements with battery life over time. And that was definitely the case with things like Moto 360, and it certainly holds true with the Galaxy Note 4. Uh, first couple days we used it, battery life went by pretty fast. It's probably because I was using it more than I would. Uh, it's got a 3,220 milliamp hour battery, and after a couple days I started using it like a normal phone, uh, it got really, really good. My usage is pretty heavy, I think probably more heavy than most. I'll take it off the charger around 6.30 to 7.15, depending on the time of day. It's got two emails being pulled down all the time. Uh, it's mostly connected to Wi-Fi, either home or at the office, which right, I spend way more time than I should. Two and a half hours of phone calls, video viewing, games, uh, all kinds of other sort of regular phone usage. By the time I plugged it in at night, around 10, 30, 11, I had about 60% battery life here. So you can easily get through two days. Uh, of course, it's got a removable back, so you can always buy another battery and pop that in and just go along your merry way. So we've talked a lot about all the components, the software, the hardware, the camera, how does it all come together? So I'm admittedly a bit fickle when it comes to phone. I jump from OS to OS and from phone to phone uh, without really batting an eye. This one though, I can see myself using for a very long time. It's got top tier specs, it's gonna be good for a while, a just ridiculously gorgeous screen, incredible, incredible camera, all in a package that's smaller than the iPhone 6 Plus despite having a bigger screen size. This phone gets a really solid nine and a definite recommend. Fortunately though, now that the review is done on this guy, I can go ahead and install a Google Now Launcher and a fresh icon pack and make this guy my own. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? I want to hear your thoughts. This is Galaxy Note 4, a phone you've been waiting for. You want to maybe see what else is going to come out in the next few months. Want to hear your thoughts on it? Leave in the comments right down below. Of course, check us out at technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news. Till next time, I'm John Rettinger. See you guys next video. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more videos from people who just love technology, hit the big subscribe button right here. We put up videos almost every single day. If you want to see us play video games, albeit sometimes a bit poorly, check us out at our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash technobuffalo. Link's also right down below.